Just again. Hi everybody, here I am in Chippenham. Did I say it? Good, good, good. Yeah, all right. I got the thumbs up from Lisa. Um, and I'm here with Richard. And Richard runs Pavement Magazine. And uh, kind of the reason I'm here is because of Richard. Because we started this conversation about invisible people coming over to the UK almost three years ago. Just wasn't able to make it happen. Um, but Richard has a really cool story because he runs this, it's not a street paper, it's actually uh, a publication that goes to shelters, is distributed free yep. for homeless people and those of us working in homeless services. Yeah, definitely. Well, did you know what? Our, our focus is definitely on rough sleepers. Um, and we think a, a lot of our success online, particularly with our database, is the, the, the fact that services are using it. And that's great to build to build a service, but we've got to keep the focus on who it's for, and that's why it's successful. That's why services come to use our listings right. at the back. Cause so um, yeah, it's, a, it's a news magazine. It's got it's got car cartoons in it, but it's a lot about information. So, right. and there's a lot more we'll be doing in future as well, is pro providing information to homeless people. Well, you know, um, uh, I'm not the smartest guy, but I've been around a little bit. So it's distributed for free. Advertisers don't want to advertise for homeless. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a profit model, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's why I'm so impressed because you've been doing it for a while um, and, and you're doing it for the cause because you're <laughs> not going to make money distributing a free magazine about homeless to homeless shelters. No, no we don't. Um, we've got no advertisers as such. You know, we've got a couple of people that do advertise, Pred yeah. who who um, like what we do but want to read some of the soup runs yeah um, and some people like Metro advertise yeah. to support us no that, that's and they it, should but you're right it's not a model it just hemorrhages funds but we've had no, a couple yeah. of good funders we run lean we've had uh, our journalists all volunteers everyone who volunteers do, doing data entry on the sites the nurses who write yeah. columns for us everyone's a volunteer except me now I've you know I've been paid for a couple of years yeah. well there's um how did you start? I, I mean, yeah, it's a great story. Yeah, do you know what? I was, I was working in a day centre and there's a gap in information. And I was, I, I was volunteering at the time, actually. Do you know what? I wasn't working. I was volunteering at the day centre, giving out food. And the people I was volunteering with, journalists, and there was a lot of um, small magazines we saw. And I thought, we should have a magazine that says exactly what's going on behind the scenes. A lot of big decisions we made about homeless provision and policy. But it wasn't always getting down to people on the street. So we said, that's what we decided to do, and we just started printing an A4 magazine. We got uh, funding from a publisher, enough to cover the first two print runs, and we just started doing it, massively naively. Right. Um, and I think partly we've always been playing catch-up. We've never had, we decided to do a thing, worked out a business model, built up from there. We just started doing it. And so it's only now, say, seven years later, we're actually sort of finding our feet a bit and doing a redesign and actually targeting it a bit better. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Um, uh, what do you see? Because obviously, you know, print media, even digital media, everything's changing so fast. You know, trying to keep up with, you know, what's happening with social media and everything else. How are you catching up? Because like you said, you're hemorrhaging funds, so you don't have a whole lot of money to, to, to do. And I know you're doing a redesign and everything else. What are you, you trying to do? Well, do you know what? Yes, print, print, they say, is dead. And it's obviously not. And with our readership, it's definitely not. We, yeah. we, although a lot of people got mobile phones, so access to the web, it's not the same as having a, a paper copy of the, in, your, in your hands that you can put in your pocket. Right. It's, it's an A4 magazine, but I got one in my pocket. Um, so it's A4, and there's something about that that's tangible. You can hand right. it to someone and they've got it then, yeah. um, even if they don't have access to it. And homeless people love to read. They yeah. read, they and, devour books. Um, so print isn't dead. We're definitely just sticking with it. But online is, is quite big for us because we're, we've got limited areas we, we publish in. We're, we're London, the West Midlands, that's three cities in the West Midlands, and Scotland, two cities. Wow. But online is, we're across the UK, and we're getting a thousand hits a day on the site, which is quite big. Yeah. Um, for a homeless without, site, get For a homeless site, and with, without any, um, it's been done by well, Val Stevenson, who's put everything into it, and uh, yeah. Flat Earth Communication, you built it on, on a massively tight yeah. budget. So. That's something we're building as well. We're working on at the moment how to 
analyze who's using it and why and, and how we can refine that. Um, you, you probably don't know this, I used to talk about it a lot, uh, and We Are Visible is actually going through a redesign also. Uh, we'll talk about that more in the months to come. But when I first launched We Are Visible, the Pavement Magazine, you guys, they ran ads pro bono. Um, and it was where I first noticed that homeless people here in the UK are very much, uh, they're, they're more on Twitter, they're more uh, using social media, which was uh, a shock to me. A lot of uh, the homeless people I'm actually going to meet, a couple of them, they're no longer homeless the house, thank God. But um, uh, I just want to say thank you in person for that because that was really cool to run that uh, pro bono. But uh, briefly, because we try to keep the videos a little short. Um, you have an interesting, um, because you know, you have this broad view, but um, what are, as from what you see, the issues of, of rough sleepers here in uh, the UK? Um, Don't mean to put you on the spot. No, do you know what? I think, <laughs> but it, you're it, on it, the it's spot. It's constantly changing its people. I think that the, the biggest issue is with, with policy. And, and when you get government policy in it, and they have to do this, and I understand why they do it, is having homogen homogenous services. And you really need plurality of services to be able to catch as many people as possible. And there's many organizations that aren't under statute funding who are doing great work, and I wish they could get some statute funding. I'm not talking about us at all. We're never going to take it. But plurality of services is what we should be aiming for. Instead of um, being dictated from the top, that this is what we should do, because people start falling through the gaps if you try and mold services to fit in with your policies. Right. Very similar to in the States we call it the continuum of care and then we have what they say gaps in the safety mm -hmm. net where people are falling through sure. and I say if well if you can name it fix it mm -hmm. you know if you got it you you know so um, what I've noticed here is there actually are a lot of similarities more than I thought um, but one big thing to me is what I've noticed is that bureaucracy kills. Mm -hmm. You know, the same bureaucracy, the maddening, the, you know, like you said, policy and everything else um, uh, is universal. You, you have, you know, politics and egos and just all this stuff that just prevents people from getting the help they need. You're right. And some of the most positive stuff that's happening is outside of that. And yeah. There's, there's a reason for it. And uh, like here, I mean, I, I loved what was happening here at Doorway today. Mm -hmm. I mean, it uh, was not just a day center, but a place that was getting... Uh, um, well, you got to run. I don't want to I mean, keep you. You know what? It's lovely to meet you. It was great. Thank you for driving to, and, and, and thank you for much fun. for uh, supporting invisible people, and we are visible all these years. We'll yeah. do some more in the future. Yeah. And thank you guys for tuning in.